Hello, my name is Robert Dean Steele, and this is your daily Bible class. Well, we've been cruising through the book of 1 Peter. We are in chapter 3, and we are looking today at verses 13, and we're going to be going right through to verse number 19. So, here we are. He says, who is then can harm you if you are eager to do good? He's asking the question, who is it that's going to do harm to you if you are eager to do good? Well, the enemy wants you to fall. He wants you to fail. But when you are eager to do good, there is going to be no accusation, no temptation, no deception that's going to pull you away from God. But even if you should suffer for what is right, you are actually blessed. He says, sometimes suffering comes because of righteousness. But you need to understand that you are actually being blessed. I'm being blessed because I'm suffering? Yes, you need to understand that. You need to understand that uh, when the thing is over, you are going to be blessed. You are going to have so many wonderful qualities added to your life. You're going to be strong. You're going to be blameless. You're going to be creative. You're going to be wise. You're going to be resourceful. There are so many things on the other side of the suffering. He says... But in your hearts, revere Jesus Christ as Lord. He says, listen, don't be afraid of their threats and don't be frightened. He's saying to you today, don't be frightened, don't be afraid, even if someone threatens you. I've had people say, you know, I'm going to do such and such to you. You're going down, man. They've said that. But you know what? I'm still here. And God has been faithful. I've seen people say things against me, and you know, people who really believe in me say, no, that is not him. Years ago, there was a pastor in one of the communities in which I lived. He went into an office of a, uh, of a, of a newspaper office that I was writing a column for, and he began to put me down in front of those people there, and one of the ladies said, you stop. I know him. And he's not as you say. Would you please leave the office? That pastor left the office. Everything that he had attempted to do absolutely failed. Why? Because the character that I had been living before those people. You know what? Even when you're slandered, those who know you best will stand beside you. I mean, if someone believes the lie, they'll believe the lie. But if they really know you, and if they really know that God is working in your life, they're going to believe the truth. He goes on to say this. He says, but in their heart, but in your heart, revere the Lord Christ as Lord. Always be prepared. He says, when you are in this situation, just remember one thing. In your heart, revere the Lord. It all begins from the inside out. Out of the heart, the mouth speaks. Out of the heart, the life shows. Sooner or later, your life is going to show what's in the heart. And if your life is centered on Jesus Christ, that's what's going to come out in your life. You are going to be a testimony of Jesus Christ. And he goes on to say, but always, he says, he says, be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you for the reason that you have, that you hope. He says, be ready, in season and out of season. That's what Peter said, or I, Paul said. He says, be ready, in season and out of season. You've got to have a hope, Lord. You've got to have a hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. You've got something that they don't have. You've got the gift of eternal life. You've got Jesus Christ living in your life and situation. And because of that, you have something that they don't have. And when you do it, you do it in two ways, with gentleness and respect. Folks, when you're talking to Jesus Christ, don't sh about Jesus Christ to someone, don't sit there and try to shove it down. I can't tell you of how many men and women have come to me and said, I did not, I'm not serving Jesus Christ because my mom or dad, someone tried to shove it down my throat. We are to bring the message of Jesus Christ with gentleness and with respect. Why should we do that? Because of our good works, we are going to win people to Jesus Christ. Keeping a clear conscience. Folks, I want to tell you something. When you walk before the Lord, 
when you are blameless, when you are walking in gentleness and respect, when you're walking in the fruit of the Spirit, you know what? You have a clear conscience. When you are trying to live for the Lord with every fiber of your being, you are rejecting the evil things that come your way. You are not going to give in to them. You are fleeing from temptation. You know what? You're living with a clear conscience before the Lord. He says this, so that those who speak maliciously against your good behavior Behavior will be ashamed in their slander. I want to tell you something. As I said before, when someone comes against you and you are living a godly life, people are going to see them as they are, as slanders and liars and mockers. And they're going to say, that's not who that person is. I know them. Their life is a model of goodness and unity and, and character and honesty and integrity. And it says, it is better, for it is better, and it's God's will to suffer for doing good than doing evil. It's God's will that if we do suffer, we should do it for good and not evil. For Christ also suffered once and for all for sins, being righteous for the unrighteous, and to bring you to God. Jesus Christ allowed His body to be broken. He allowed all the sins of the world to be placed upon Him so that we would become righteous. We were unrighteous. But through Jesus Christ, death, burial, and resurrection, we were made righteous. What a wonderful thought in itself. It also says, For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for unrighteous, to bring us to God. He was put to death in the body, but became alive in the spirit. Yes, Jesus Christ was dead. Yes, Jesus Christ was, was put in that borrowed grave. But he didn't stay there. He was made alive through the Spirit. I love that. Romans 8, 11. That same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you. And he will quicken your mortal body. He will give you the ability to be an example in a lost and dying world. It says, put to death in the body, but became alive in the Spirit. Think about that for just a moment. Jesus Christ died so that you and I could be the righteousness of Jesus Christ. We could live a life of example for those in this world today. We are called to do that. Make that decision today and live a life so well that all your accusers will be silenced by the righteous life that you live. My name is Robert Dean Steele. This is your Daily Bible Class.